the tight five. But no. Let's talk. Razor's interview yesterday. Refreshing, I thought that it was. The White Ferns are doing it tough overnight in South Africa at the T20 Women's World Cup. Hoping that Bangladesh can upset the locals. Football Ferns if we want. Do the Black Caps lack confidence? Should Gary Stead be saying that ahead of the second test? Should he be saying it out loud? Uh, Danny Lee joins Live Golf. I couldn't give a stuff about this, but you might, Lachlan, you might want to talk about it. Speaking of golf, the Napier Golf Club has been looted. The Napier Golf Club has been looted after the floods, people. Um, Nankerville, let's talk about him. And having a toasty pie machine at work. We've got a lot to talk about. Start with Razor yesterday, though. I really enjoyed that interview. I wish we could have had him on for longer. I know he's a busy man. I'd love to get him in the studio. I'll get him online for a good hour at some stage. What impressed you the most? What stuck in your mind the most after talking to him, bud? Oh, um, I don't know. A couple of things. Mm. Um, I like the uh, the the stripped back, modest normalcy about how he goes about his business and how his teams go about their business. One thing I hate in sport, and it makes me sound like an old man. And I remember Anthony. Nothing wrong with that. Don't say it with a sneer in your voice, <laughs> man. I remember Anthony Seabold did this when he took over as Broncos coach. When I heard it, I didn't like it. That he was ushering in this new era of analytics and using iPads instead of clipboards and trainings and using all these numbers and graphs and whatnot. And I just thought, I don't think rugby league's a complicated sport, son. And sure enough, within two years, he was gone from the job and got sacked, and he pretty much led us to a wooden spoon, even though he wasn't there by the end of that season. Um, but with Razor, it just seems a lot more. Um, just, just relaxed and a lot more old-fashioned with how he does his training. It's like you, you get up, you, you get your players to get up in good time, shower, turn up to training, be sharp. I remember we had him on the show last year. I know this wasn't yesterday's interview, but one thing he likes to do in the middle of winter is when they have trainings at like 7 or 8 a.m. really early in the morning, he gets them to roll around in the icy That's grass. Right. Yeah, yeah, I love that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, just, I, 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 I think I, when, you, when you're dealing with young men, sorry to school, when you're dealing with young men and you're dealing with, with rugby players and you're, and, you're, and you're trying to get the best out of them, I don't think there's any weird, um, you know, uh, uh, real detailed way of tapping into them. I just think that, especially with a game like rugby, it's just doing the basics right, yeah, getting the basics right, and that starts training. It's not about yeah. overcooking it. It's not about overthinking it. You've got to care first and foremost, and he does, obviously. He cares deeply about his players. He cares about winning, obviously, but he cares about people, and I think that comes across in everything that he says. Mm. Um, he's also a guy that thinks incredibly deeply about the game without overcomplicating it, if that makes sense. He doesn't need to overcomplicate it. You know, the guy's track record is second to none, isn't it? Um, does he make the All Black coach this year? I think he does. I, don't, I think that's without question. I don't know when that happens, but I actually do think so. Look, the football ferns, we've already talked about the football ferns. Do we need to move on from this year? Let's talk about the white ferns instead. Now, the white ferns got absolutely toweled in the first two games at the T20 Women, Women's World Cup. 76 and 71 they went out with. And now tender hooks overnight. I'm damn hoping that Bangladesh can produce a miracle here. Because I just think... That we have been bitten so hard on the backside, this White Ferns team. I would love them to get in a semi-final and just see, because that would be the test for me. You know, won a couple of easy games at the end of the round, Robin. Lost one that we shouldn't have lost. Sri Lanka, an easy game? Well, they beat South Africa, didn't they? Did they? They got a win over someone, Sri Lanka. Yeah, it might have been the South Africa. Okay, well, in that case, South Africa well, weren't meant to be that good, but they beat us and we, and we yeah. couldn't bat again. But mm -hmm. I'd just like to see this White Ferns side given another chance to see what they are really made of. And a semi-final knockout game at the T20 Women's World Cup would be exactly that. Might be a minor miracle that they actually make it, but what a wounded, dangerous opponent potentially they could be. Yeah, on. but how dangerous are we? I don't I know. Mean, we're not I'd Australia like or I England. Know, I know, this isn't the All Blacks know, where if you, you, know, sure, you don't I, want to catch them on a day when they're motivated. I'd like to see it, though. Yeah. I'd like to see it. I don't know. Part of me thinks that we'll get bounced in the semi-finals or, and then, you know, what's the point? It's kind of, it's kind of like... If I could, you know, when my Eagles made the playoffs last year, not this year when they made the Super Bowl, but last year in the NFL, and we got into the playoffs, I'm like, oh, great, but we're going to get spanked by the Buccaneers oh, in our first game. Listen to you, mate. And I mean, we did. This is a and we did. team that never gets in the playoffs, I mate. Rather, get in the I'd playoffs, actually rather miss the rather playoffs. Play. No, please, please. Well, what's the point of going there if you're going to get smacked I by 30 I don't know points? because we haven't been there for the last 180 yeah, years. Never, How would I know? Yeah, last time you guys were in the playoffs. Danny Lee joins Live Golf. So what? Danny Lee, 259th in the world. This, the New Zealand sports media are pathetic at times. Yeah, I mean, I, he's a Kiwi. I worked in a sport. Well, they claim he's a Kiwi. He's not a Kiwi. He's South Korean, mate. 
Wow. He came here so that he didn't have to do his military service. That's why he came here. He's never really? been back here since he left. Or if he has, he keeps it bloody quiet. Never plays the New Zealand Open, given absolutely nothing back. He was born in South Korea. He, born in he South became Korea. a New Zealand citizen in 2008. Well, look, he came even because otherwise he has to do compulsory military training saying. for two years, which is a lot of South Korean young men leave, and especially a lot of their sports stars do, and they, they change allegiance because it's just a hell of a convenience. I don't think Danny Lee's a New Zealander at all. Sure, he can be a citizen, but come on, what's he done for you lately, mate? Yeah, that's the thing. What's he done for, New Zealand, done for New Zealand golf? Nothing. Nothing. He never does that. He Zero. never has any interviews with the media. Never. He never comes here. No. He never plays here. No. So what makes him New Zealand? Well, he's got a citizenship. Zealand well, besides, you know, I know, but citizenship. Yeah. I mean, he doesn't do anything well, for New Zealand golf. It's, it's pathetic that New Zealand sportsmen who are desperate to try and have a guy up there in the in the. You got Ryan Fox. He never returns calls you or anything. Ryan yeah, you got Fox. Ryan Fox. Now. You, 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 it's you a bit got... like Stephen Adams. Well, I mean, Stephen Adams never returns a call either. But we're so... he does come back to New Zealand. But in terms of representing actually, the tall actually, blacks, and to be fair, he does invest heavily he do, in. Yeah, he does a lot of like youth, youth like basketball clinics. But I always think, you know, play for the tall blacks. Play for the tall blacks, mate. The Napier Golf Club was looted. Yeah. I mean, what, are we, what was that thing, Jacinda? We're a nation of five million again, aren't we? Yeah. Not, no, no, a team of five million. A team million. of five million, yeah. that's right. Yeah, obviously yeah. not quite We're five We're a team million. at the moment, aren't, aren't we? we? just? Looting, robbing, generators in Hawke's Bay being stolen. Yeah, you know, there's there's um, some good family friends of mine who live out... Uh, it's a, it's close to Miani Road. It's not quite Teradol. It's a bit further towards the coast, so I don't know if that's still Teradol. It's the outskirts of it. But they live there, and they live around a lot of rivers, so that, that area of Napier is just flooded. Thankfully, they, they, they're all right and their house is fine. But they're sharing a generator with one of their neighbours. But they're only um, transporting the, uh, the generators to and from houses on two moments of the day. So like two one-hour blocks during the day. Because outside of that, they've recognised that that's when the gangs go out to try and steal them. Now, as the yeah, police minister and the prime minister says, no, none of this is actually yeah, pull happening. Your heads yeah, none of this is happening. And if it is happening, yes, well, don't do it. Because that'll work. Nankerville, a big loss or not? No. Nah. Why not? Well, I mean, we, he was... How do I how do I phrase this right? He, he was never in the All Blacks. And yes, he played well for the Chiefs. I'm not a Chiefs fan, so I'm talking about this from an All Blacks perspective. So I, I don't really feel like we're missing much because we never really saw him in the jumper. Now, if he played for the All Blacks and he actually had a couple of good games, then, oh, OK, well, maybe my mind would be changed, but it doesn't feel like a big loss. Because Midfield feels the one area at the moment where we can probably afford to lose a couple. We, we've got a, yeah. we've got maybe There's six. There's a lot of people who, who really rate Nanko. Yeah, but, including Warren. really do. Yeah, he really Warren does. does. Yeah. Our, our good friend Ruben Mama. He's a big Chiefs fan, he I'm does. I'm wondering whether or not he's going to be another James Lowe, though. Whether or not it's just one that gets away that you don't really yeah, realise. Yeah, James how... Lowe was never in the All Blacks picture. He was always on the outside. Well, outskirts. how did he get so goddamn good? And why wasn't he in the All Blacks picture? Well, I, I'm not, not to say he's not skilled, but he didn't get in there because probably there were more skilled wingers yeah, at, at the time. time. Yeah, okay. And in Ireland, at least with that team right now, I mean, there's not anyone who ever... I mean, and then Johnny Sexton's this to a T. There's no one in that team who stands out as... Um, incredibly talented and a generational talent by their hands and their feet and whatnot and their speed and stuff. They're just really good players, but they're really well coached. Really well coached solo players. 217 times. Devlin. Unbelievable. Incredible. The Platform.